So today we are going to talk about the last topic within the so-called the surface green boundary interface, which is read to yourself interface interfaces. Interface is the boundary between two quite often part. Interface is between different uh, faces, and quite often in here we are more talking about solid solid face. And you can see the surface is an interface between bulk of the material and the vacuum. Of course, these are interface, but uh, here we are particularly talking about the interface that are between two solid part, solid material, and its influence on the so-called precipitate shape. What does precipitate mean? Something comes out from a so-called solution. That's quite often when you think of precipitate, when you add too much salt into water, the salt would eventually precipitate out. Or you have a saturated salt solution at, uh, let's say, higher temperature, and when you cool it down, what would happen? Some salt in the solution would come out, precipitate out. And the so-called interfacial energy in this case would determine the precipitate shape, the shape of the precipitate. And in this particular case, the solid precipitate from the host precipitate shape. Okay, That's what I, we are going to deal with. We talk about surface, we talk about the green boundary, we know how to deal with energy for an idealized surface, we know how to deal with energy for a so-called uh, small angle tilt green boundary, right? And then now let's think of the interface between different phase, the transition region, which we call interface, okay? And the simplest one would what people call coherent interface, coherent interface, which means the two phases, coherent means they match very well at the transition region between the two phases, okay? And um, we may have one scenario that we have the two phases would have the same lattice structure, same orientation, something that as we draw here. Same lattice structure, same orientation, and of course similar lattice parameter, and then the matching at this transition or region or the interface would be pretty good, means coherent. Make sense? We may have some other uh, scenario that we have same lattice structure but a different orientation between the two faces meeting in the interface or boundary, right? Something like this. Same lattice structure but a different uh, orientation but still matching pretty well at the interface. S this is similar to the case of a twinning boundary, except what? The twinning boundary on each side is the same types of material. Here on each side is a different uh, material, but they share the same that is structure, but orientation is different. Okay? Another situation would be the so-called different lattice structure, completely different lattice structure, something idealized, something like this. One side, let's say we have something like a FCC, ABC, 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 close packing. The other side, as I draw something like a H HCP, hexagonal close packing structure, AB, AB structure, but somehow, at the transition or interface between these two phases, I have still pretty good matching, right? That's kind of the coherent interface with if we're thinking uh, the structure on both sides. And then let's go one step further, thinking of okay, in within the two-dimensional interface, how would the two phases match each other? I say we want coherent, we want a geometric match at the interface. And typically when we say match, we need two things. The first one is match of the two-dimensional lattice structure, 
in that crystal plane. Make sense? So if we have 2D, let's say close packing, something like this. And let's say we have something like this on the top layer, different material. In terms of the 2D lattice structure, they are the same, right? Still, both of them are closed packing hexagonal type. But if they are misoriented, aligned but misoriented, we don't call this coherent matching. So we need the pattern to match. But at the same time, quite often, we need matching of the closed packing direction. You see what I mean? Here, between the blue layer, atom layer, and the red layer, the closed packing direction, do they match or do they not match? They don't match. So in this case, they don't form a coherent plane. When we say coherent, they have to, whether they are same structure or different structure, we need matching of both the two-dimensional pattern and also the closed pack direction, which means I have one layer of atom for one material, the other layer of atom have to be matched in the closed packing direction. Only that when we, would we say, okay, we have a good coherent matching, okay? And then the so-called interfacial energy. We think of structure, we think of the energy. The interfacial energy for such a coherent interface would uh, come from quite often two terms one would be okay if we have perfect geometric matching means what one layer at the top layer the pattern is exactly the same the distance is exactly the interatomic distance would also be exactly the same and uh, the alignment of the close packing direction also perfect if in this case, so-called geometrically perfect uh, match, which is what? Common or not common? <laughs> not common. Probably you never find it. Almost never. But in such a scenario, the interfacial energy would come still come from what? I say chemical contribution because on either side, we are dealing with what? Same atom or different atom? quite often at least the sum of different atoms right so that will be so-called chemical contribution which means although we have perfect uh, geometric match but because they are bonding to at for atoms at the interface bonding to the wrong types of atoms there will be some difference in the energy due to this bonding nature they're bonding to a different atom they have similar size, but they are different atoms. So the bonding would be different. That gives us so-called chemical contribution. Okay? But uh, this is always there. Whether you have perfect match or not so perfect match, you would always have the wrong types of bonding, bonding to the different types of atom. That gives you the chemical contribution of the energy. But in reality, other than this chemical contribution, there would always be some geometric mismatch. Make sense? No matter how close copper is to nickel, copper is still different from nickel. Make sense? So there will always be, if we look at it carefully, copper atom size will always be slightly different from that of nickel or copper between copper and the zinc. And as a result, even though the crystal structure would match, orientation would match, I would still have some geometric mismatch, just because each of these layer, the atom size would be slightly different. When we say if the mismatch in the atom size is small, well, 2% quite often. Okay, something as what we draw here. Of course, this is an exaggeration. You can already visually see the big difference between one material on the top and another material on at the bottom. But anyway, you see here, they share the same what? Lattice structure, right? Same structure. 
but uh, what is different? The so-called uh, lattice parameter, right? The distance from one atom to the other atom, or lattice parameter, when you think of it, it's just another measure of if it's different material, atom size, right? Atom size. So we have difference in the lattice parameter. We have this mismatch. And uh, because of this, we would have near perfect, but not perfect. Good match, near perfect, but there's some difference in lattice parameter. And uh, that would give us so-called uh, geometric or strain contribution. Make sense? Strain means what? Dimension change, relative dimension change, geometric mismatch. That also contributes to the total individual energy. Again, here in this lecture, we are dealing with the interface between two different uh, solid uh, phases. Here, the first one, we talk about the coherent interface, which means they match pretty well at the interface. But that's still interfacial energy, and it always comes from two terms. One would be the chemical term, which means for the atoms at the interface, at least uh, along certain direction, it's bonded to the wrong types of atoms. That's the chemical contribution. But in addition, because we said that's almost a never perfect geometric match, we would also have this second contribution, which is geometric or string energy contribution. Make sense? For coherent interface.